Okay, good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cabinet this evening. So we'll go straight in, start with apologies for absence. There are none. Everybody is here. Uh, and then we have the minutes of the previous meeting. Your wish I sign those as a true record. It's proposed by Councillor Summers and seconded by Councillor Pritchard. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you very much. I will get those signed. Uh, item three, declaration of interest. Does anybody have anything to declare? I'm not aware of any. No, excellent. In that case, we move straight on to question time. Uh, so in pursuance of uh, rule number 13, we have a question from a member of the public this evening, and it's uh, Mr. Loxon. So Mr. Loxon, would you like to come up and... You're really far away. Can, you, can we not use that one there? I hadn't spotted that before, sorry. So if you could uh, ask your question, please, Mr. Luxton. So on the 30th of May, 2022, the council provided an update on the energy rebate. The update stated that 8,877 letters have been issued to non-direct debit payers with how to claim the 150 pound rebate, 150 rebate from the post office. Could you please confirm how many of those letters had actually been sent to residents and how many are included in the ones being issued by the post office over the next three weeks from the 28th of June? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Loxton. Councillor Bailey. Thank you. So as at the 30th of May, the council had sent the required data files to the post office for them to issue the letters, which is 8,877 which is for non-direct debit payers. As you'll appreciate, the post office need to put processes in place to ensure that they are able to manage the large number of cash payments expected at individual branches in order to make that cash, sorry, in order to make sure that the cash is available when people visit the post office to collect it. They are sending the letters out over three weeks, which is from the 28th of June. Um, although no letters had been sent to residents as at the 30th, they should have started to be delivered from the 28th with residents starting to collect cash payments from this week. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Uh, Mr Loxton, do you have a supplementary question? Yes, thank you. So after that update on the 30th of May went out, when residents contacted the council, they were told to expect the letters in the next couple of weeks. In that same update, it was stated further letters would be issued the week commencing the 13th of June. Obviously, that did not happen. No further update was then issued till this one on the 15th of June. On what date did the council learn that none of the letters had actually been sent to residents by the post office? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll need to check that and then come back to you with a, uh, a response in writing, if that's okay with you. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll get that as soon as possible, please. And we'll get that sent over to, to Mr Loxton and included in the minutes uh, for, for the next time we meet. Thank you very much. That concludes question time. So we'll now move on to item five, which is matters referred to the cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedure rules. Uh, there are none that I'm aware of. Uh, it is early in the year still. Uh, so we'll move on to item six, which is the future high street fund update. Uh, and this is a report from myself. This report went through uh, infrastructure safety and growth uh, recently, uh, and we took feedback uh, and comments from that uh, committee, uh, which, will, uh, which will go back to board. Um, so this is literally just an update report for information. Uh, so the college quarter, uh, South Staffordshire College were successful in their grant funding from the Department of Education. Uh, this was this was something we were particularly concerned about for a long time uh, and the government helpfully kept delaying the answer uh, to, to the uh, to the question uh, so so it's good news uh, and a real green light for the project uh, that they've been given that that funding and we can crack on uh, with with the, with the move of the college into the town centre uh, in terms of what we're doing in our part of that project uh, as you know we took ownership of the cooperative building uh, in March uh, and we now have a submitted plan application for the demolition of and we're looking to procure uh, a company to, to start taking down the the 1960s elements 
of the co-op building and we've also uh, started work on the design for the enterprise the new enterprise center the tech 2 which is the victorian element uh, of the building which faces onto onto coal hill uh, in terms of middle entry we're still in negotiations with peer groups for vacant possession of the middle entry units that are at the back of the town hall uh, currently uh, we're looking at the end of august uh, for those and we've also started to look at the design con concept designs for those properties uh, for, for when we rebuild them in a usable condition. Uh, so this is about new retail units that are flexible uh, to house a, a various uh, different businesses uh, and open up a square area at the back of uh, at the back of the town hall. So that is ongoing. Um, in terms of the Castle Gateway, which is literally behind me uh, and, and to my to my left. Uh, the plan application has been submitted for the Peel Cafe or Goostries or whatever you care to call the building uh, ju just outside the window. Um, it has produced, uh, there are some challenges with that, uh, but it's still on course for us to preserve the character of the building uh, and preserve the view of the street scene uh, with that property. Uh, there's a few issues in terms of the, um, the condition of that property, but it's an old building and we've we're, we're going to walk into those sorts of problems, uh, but it's, uh, it's up to us to make sure we do the best we can to make sure that the street scene stays the same. If we look at the Market Street properties on the opposite side, uh, Julian Floris, for those that walked in uh, from that direction this evening, you'll see uh, that they are moving just down the road to another TBC property uh, and work is ongoing there. And it's, um, from, from their end, it's looking quite good at the moment. Uh, and, and they're really bringing on that, uh, that renovation of, of that shop, uh, which means that we will take uh, pos a vacant possession of their existing property on, uh, at, the end, at the end of August. There are some challenges to the rest of the units on Market Street, and that uh, they also apply to the Julian Florist property, uh, but particularly the ones next to it between Julian and uh, the TAP. Um, a number of surveys have, have been done uh, around the structure of those buildings. Uh, and as we know, they haven't been invested in for the best part of 40 years. Uh, and as a result, are in a particularly bad state of repair. Uh, so so whilst, uh, whilst the challenge is, uh, is certainly high, uh, we kind of anticipated we would have uh, some sort of issues with, with those buildings. So we're, we're looking at the timbers and what we can do with those buildings and the commitment remains the same as it did at the start of this project and that is to bring them into a usable condition and preserve as much as possible of those buildings as we can. Uh, as we go through the next stage of the work we'll be able to define what that exactly means uh, in terms of the, the finished product and in terms of the, the project itself. Um, in terms of the, the bridge to the castle grounds, um, a couple of technical issues, I say technical issues, there's a, a, a thumping great cable that goes on the bottom of the bridge, which is, uh, uh, which is Western Powers. Uh, so that brings a, a challenge that we've got to get around, uh, but we're still at early stages in terms of what the options are for, for that bridge and the gateway to the castle ground. So uh, it, it's work in progress, and, uh, and, and these are the sorts of things that we, we will tease out as we, go through, uh, uh, as we go through that process. The only other things I wanted to highlight this evening is... There are regular monthly drop-ins uh, for future High Street Fund updates. However, take-up has been particularly low recently on those. Um, and in terms of the budget and time scales, uh, Project Board receives the risk assessment, uh, the risk register each time it meets. Uh, that's maintained uh, by our consultant, Matt Baines. There are concerns about uh, inflation regards consult uh, construction. Uh, and I just wanted to just to point out that whilst it states in the report in terms of cost of materials, it's about the cost of construction. So, so materials may go up and down, but so, uh, so too will, will labour costs. Uh, so, so there's significant risk uh, attached to that. However, there is a awareness of that risk, and if we're aware of it, we can, we can look at options going forward to, to mitigate it. So unless there are any questions from Cabinet, I'll move this. Any questions? Councillor Clements. Yeah, just quickly, Chair. Um, the monthly drop-ins, you said the, um, the take-up had been low. Can um, we circulate a list of when we're having those and we can perhaps share them on social media and put a press release out or something? 
Um, yeah, I can certainly, certainly uh, pass that round. Uh, however, for those who, who I want to be sending that to, you know, to any members of the public that are, that are watching this meeting, um, the Transforming Tamworth website is, is the main portal for the public to get updates on, uh, and the dates and details will be will be on there as uh, as well as a, a lot of other information as to uh, the Future High Street Fund project and other projects that we're we're engaged with. So the, the Transforming Tamworth website is the the first port of call on, on that one. No, thank you for that. Any further questions or comments? Okay, I will move. I will move that we note the report and state that uh, scrutiny were particularly excited to endorse the work we've done rather than just note it. So, so we'll make a note that they endorsed it. Uh, and uh, happy to move the report. Councillor Pritchard has seconded really quickly because he didn't want anyone else to get in. So, all those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. So, next item on the agenda is Staffordshire Sustainability Board Vision, uh, which is also my report. Uh, members will be aware uh, a couple of months ago that we agreed to the formation of the Staffordshire Leaders Board, uh, which pulls all the Staffordshire District Councils and the County Council together within that piece of work, or sorry, alongside that piece of work, uh, the Staffordshire Sustainability Board was also created, um, which we have bought into. Uh, in terms of bought into, we've actually made a contribution to a, a member of staff to do some, some work on this particular project. So the report you have in front of you this evening is asking you to endorse the new vision and base pledge of the Staffordshire Sustainability Board. And importantly, this is about what we can do as individual authorities and how we can collaborate with each other, how we can influence others, how we can influence each other and the outside world. Uh, so the, the vision is on page 15 of the reports that you've got in front of you. Um, the, the Staffordshire Sustainability Board is to facilitate an, a, the collaborative forum to work together as the democratically elected bodies of Staffordshire to influence change and encourage organisations and individuals to ensure that Staffordshire is net carbon zero by at least 2050 or before. The board will also work as a co collective to address climate change adaptation measures that are within individual organisations le leverage to influence and to facilitate change with adaptations to climatic changes that are already locked in. Sustainability and habitat biodiversity will be reviewed throughout 2022 and will be considered in a revised vision in 2023. Um, so that's the that's the vision and, and a bit of uh, bit of information on that. Um, plenty of stuff in the report. Plenty of stuff about our commitments in terms of baselines and reporting, uh, in terms of uh, carbon literacy uh, training and awareness. Uh, there's a piece there about ambassadors, and I think what we've got to remember when we talk about ambassadors, you know. Um, I'm not sure quite what's happening in America at the moment uh, with the, the Supreme Court have just uh, blocked uh, a reduction in, uh, in fossil fuel emissions. Uh, so you can now burn whatever fossil fuels you want uh, in, in America, but you can't have an abortion. Um, but here, for me, it's about what can we all do as individuals, as local authorities, or as, or as businesses to, to address the problem. Um, and, and that goes right down to award level. Uh, if we all do our own little bit, that's a massive amount of difference we can make. And unfortunately, we have to ignore what's going on out elsewhere in the world and take responsibility ourselves for driving this agenda. Uh, so there are a number of other things there. I just wanted to have a rant about the, the Americans. Um, so with that, it's all in front of you. I'm happy to move that we endorse the vision and the base pledge. Any questions or comments? Do I have a seconder? Oh, who's that? I'm going to go, I'll go, go with Councillor Doyle. So I'll propose that Councillor Doyle is seconded. All those in favour? Okay, Maurice, Martin, yeah, okay. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. That is carried. So thank you. We will move on to uh, agenda item eight, uh, which is proposals for Councillor Project Grants. And this comes in a couple of portfolio holders' names, but I'm going to ask Councillor Summers to introduce this report. Thank you very much, Chair. So this is a, uh, a pot of money from underspends on previous grants um, that we've uh, retained uh, to allow councillors to uh, bid, essentially, 
um, a competitive tender as such, if you want to call it that, for projects up to community projects up to ten thousand pounds per year. Um, of course, uh, being ten thousand, you can apply for the whole amount if you wanted to, um, or we could have several projects that come to that amount. But uh, it will be um, essentially best project wins. Um, and that's essentially it, Chair. There are four recommendations on the report. And uh, if approved, the budget uh, will be available and the uh, funding will be open from September 2022, closing date of 31st of March 2023. And the awards will be made by the Nominations and Grants Committee in June 2023. Thank you. I'd like to move the uh, recommendations. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Summers. Any questions or comments from other cabinet members? Councillor Pritchard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to reiterate, this is a um, opportunity for individual ward members to affect some larger change in their wards. Um, you know, the, the council has a has a lot of small grants. You know, you're talking a few hundred pounds. But this is, a, this is a larger pot of money where um, ward members can work with partners in their ward, they can work with the local authority or the local authorities, um, even local businesses and charities, to affect some larger scale change. So it's a real opportunity uh, for members to, to, to go out there and do something new and really, you know, uh, really have the opportunity to, to point to something and say, look what we've done, look what I've been able to do, uh, look at the change we've made, and a really good opportunity to work with the community. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so I'd like to thank Councillor Summers, Councillor Pritchard and the officers that have been involved in, in putting this together. Uh, back in February last year, uh, when, it, when I took on the leadership of the council, I said I wanted to be more engaging and I wanted to put ward members uh, at, at the front uh, in, in terms of what happens in their ward. Uh, this is another step in that process. Uh, we've got the environmental grants, we've got the community grants, uh, and now we've got this pot of, of funding. The difference with this one is it, it is competitive, uh, so so you've got to you, you you've, you've got to up your game, uh, and you've got to make sure that your your project is not only deliverable but actually brings some change. Uh, so so despite my tone, I'm actually quite excited about this because it, it it's it's an opportunity for for ward councillors to take some control as to as to what goes on in, in their wards and. Uh, and make a difference and, and answer the call uh, of the public. So it's been proposed by Councillor Summers, it's been seconded by Councillor Pritchard. All those in favour? That is carried. Well, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. So that brings us on to the Neighbourhood Community Infrastructure Levy. Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Chair. The purpose of the report is to agree a process uh, for the neighbourhood sill spending. Um, SIL comprises three elements, 5% goes towards administration of the SIL, 80% towards strategic infrastructure and the last 15% goes towards neighbourhood projects which this report is concerned with. It recently went through, it's been through the council a number of times and it recently went through ISAG uh, scrutiny committee where the scrutiny committee were in favour of it with one slight alteration. They identified a scenario where um, councillors couldn't agree an award over which project to submit forward. So the, for that, if that occurs, then the decision for the project that will proceed from that ward will be de uh, decided by Cabinet. The report contains a lot of detail around SIL. Um, what I'm going to quickly do is take you through the process uh, which is highlighted in the appendix and we'll go out to councillors and explain the process to them. So, the, uh, so as I says, 15% of our annual SIL income is available for ward members to direct towards nominated neighbourhood projects that they feel would benefit their community. Ward members are invited to subject one project per ward each financial year, a maximum of 10 projects will be presented to Cabinet for discussion. Between one and 10 of those projects may be selected to receive funding, depending on the Council's allocative priorities. Only one member per ward is required to complete and submit the form below. 
However, all members for each respective ward must be in agreement of both the nominated project and the contents of the application form. No more than one application form per ward will be accepted. Under Regulation 59F of the Community Infrastructure Levy Regulations 2010, nominated projects must be concerned with either the provision, improvement, replacement, operation or maintenance of infrastructure within a ward or any other miscellaneous activities which assist in addressing the demands and development places on a ward. Uh, planning officers will be available to advise uh, ward members. Any application must detail the perceived benefits that the nominated project would bring to the ward and local community. This would be supported by evidence of the consultation and engagement with local residents. And they should provide as much detail as possible in this form. This will assist both the planning policy team and cabinet in evaluating each project and in determining where funding should be allocated. Detail of the amount of self funding that they wish to apply for, uh, where the proposed project will be carried out by a third, third party. This figure must be supported by three separate quotations for the works, which is pretty much standard policy within the council anyway. The it is intended to act as an ex the form below is intended to act as an expression of interest only. Completed forms must be forwarded. Uh, the email address is on the form, um, and applications will close on Friday, the 9th of September, 2022. Um, I move uh, that we discuss this, and then I'll move to uh, submit the report for approval. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Any questions or comments from Cabinet members? Okay, so do you want to move that then, Councillor Doyle? Oh, just one additional note. The pot now sits at over £100,000, so there's a fair bit there. Uh, yes, and I move the report. And look for a second. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have a seconder? Oh, Councillor Summers was there first. Councillor Bailey tried, but it won't happen. Yeah. Um, so in that case, it's been proposed and seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. Get your thinking caps on. Get talking to your ward colleagues, because you haven't got much time on that. Item 10 on the agenda is the Townsborough Council grant scheme. Uh, so this is, again, Councillor Martin Summers. Thank you, Chair. So uh, this is a kind of historical statement of fact. The grants have been awarded as shown in the appendix, but essentially this is to uh, endorse the outturn of the nominations grants subcommittee. And indeed the uh, grants have been awarded under community grants, councillor community grants and festive grants. Um, and indeed the underspend from which went towards the previous agenda item. But um, the uh, report is as is, it's uh, money's been spent. It's been out there and doing good, and uh, hopefully uh, we will um, do some more good in this budget this year with, uh, with with the money available. I encourage all members to to use their allocations and community groups to apply, because there is money there. So I'd like to move that recommendation, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Summers. Uh, Councillor Pritchard is pointing at me. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I'd just like to point out, normally the uh, the list of the recipients of, of sort of the more general grants would be quite longer, so you can see the impact COVID has had on the uh, voluntary and community sector in Tamworth. Um, we've had a, a couple of years of actually a low level of applications. You know, normally we'd have uh, a lot more. But the good news is to see the take up of the council and festive grants. Um, so there's a nice long list there. So that's working very well. Um, so just again reiterate to local community groups, voluntary groups, organisations, you know, there are grants available from the council, so please do apply. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? Okay, Councillor Summers has Second. proposed. Councillor Pritchard has seconded. All those in favour? That is unanimous. That is carried. Thank you very much. That brings us to item 11, which is the exclusion of the press and public. So I move that in accordance with... The provisions of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meetings and access to information, England Regulation 2012 and Section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, that the press and public 
be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following items of business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraphs 1, 2, 3 and or 4 of part 1 of the schedule 12A to the Act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information from the public. I so move. Do I have a second? Councillor Pritchard, all those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Can we turn the cameras off, please, Jodie?